Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel if you're returning. If you're new here, my name is Tori and I make planner videos. <laughs> but I wanted to share a little bit of like a, a accessories and book haul for this video before I get into the whole journaling part. Um, purchased these items from my local Habitat for Humanity store and so I want to play a game where I show you everything and then at the very end you guess how much all of it cost um, because I think that would be fun for you to I don't know see what you think I purchased all of the excuse me my gooby gone it was falling over um i think it'd be fun to see what you think all of these items cost so let's get into it um i purchased these little containers so i got this little tiny basket because i have a lot of like stuff on top of my iris drawers to the left over here that don't really have a home and they just kind of sit and i want them to have like their own little home so, for example, I have a random stitch. He can go in there. <laughs> um, and then I have some pens from um, Out of Print, which is a Velocireader. And then the Coffee Monsters Co. Protect Your Peace pen. Um, those can go in there with stitch. As well as I have uh, these stickers. I have a clip that says coffee is always coffee is always good idea okay <laughs> um and then I have some ink uh samples and a roll of tape so just putting that in there makes me feel so much better about like not stuff not sitting around and just wobbling whenever like I shift and accidentally bump my desk or something so that's gonna go there and then the next thing I have not really figured out what I'm going to do really but over to the right side over here I have a like a I guess I guess it might be a brush holder I don't know what exactly it, um, the intended purpose was if I'm being honest but it holds like all of my Tombos and brush markers and I'm just wanting to kind of switch it up and so I'm honestly thinking I can put these we'll see how how long that lasts um maybe it'll work I'm not quite sure if it will but I just have like all my dot pins my Crayola super tips and my brush markers Ooh, okay nope missing two and then I have some Tootsie Rolls, which will go in that basket over here. This is a um, brush for cleaning out my, um, whatchamacallit, my keyboard. So I'm actually going to put it in this container along with these scissors and these pencils. And this clip will go, sorry, this clip will go in the basket as well over here. And we'll just clip it to the side. But yeah, I don't know what exactly this is for, but I could actually use it as a makeup brush holder um, because there's a lot going on with my vanity. <laughs> so I think finding other ways to store all of these supplies is actually going to kind of help me feel more organized about other areas of my home. And so I'm not sure. Like I think, so this is like my pencil bag, but I don't carry it a lot and it's kind of like a mishmash of items so I'm kind of thinking what if I put this stuff in here is that going to annoy me or am I going to enjoy it <sighs> I guess the jury will be out on that um so I guess like this this wooden box will sit on top of my desk next to my computer and then the other will sit 
to the right of my desk. But yeah. And I just have like page flags and stuff and like washi that could be put away if I'm being really honest. And I could actually utilize this um, pencil bag for something else because I don't like I could put probably some electronics in it and use it in my bag because usually if I'm carrying anything around with me, it's going to be my rings and I use my uni jet stream, uh, one of them from the Hobonichi folder I made this year as my pen and it's like a three in one. So I feel like I have three pins on me at all times um, and I don't feel the need to carry around like a bag full of items that I know I'm not going to be able to utilize throughout the work day. So that is kind of where I'm at with all of that. So let me put these things like I'm, I have a whole dedicated drawer to page flags and post-it notes that I'm putting these in over here. Um, but this does not fit. So let me see. Ha ha. This is like a, pro you know, pe they, people give away promotional items. And this is one of them, so I'm not thinking that this is by any means precious. So, just take these. These would actually be perfect to put in my rings. But I can, like, throw this away now. Because it's too long to fit in the Irish drawers. Okay, so, that is kind of what I was thinking for these items. I think it turned out pretty, pretty decent for my thought process on that. I'm going to put this little pad on the side of the box as well. It's just a pad of paper that's glued together on one end. They're not sticky though. So that is going to go over here. And then this is going to go down to the right of my desk. I have like an L-shaped desk. So like if you're trying to imagine where I'm putting these things, my computer is here. The wooden cup is like in the corner and then on the other side of the desk on the right is where the tombos are now i'll see if i like it i don't know maybe i'll put them both on the how do i feel how do i feel about that i don't know um i'm not sure i don't know we'll, we'll try it out and if i don't like it i can always go back so now I figured I would kind of run you... Oh, wait. I'm not done with the haul. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Hold on. Okay. Let me put this away. Now, this is the main reason. Uh, things are falling over. This is the main reason I even went to my Habitat for Humanity store. Uh, they were having a book sale. So, I got Undefeated, Jim Thorpe, and the Carlisle Indian School football team... Um, if you don't know who Jim Thorpe was, he's one of the first Native American football players in America. And this author is a really, really, um, renowned author for, um, just young adult nonfiction writing. So, I, I mean, I've wanted to read this for years and I found this copy and I was like, it's such, in such good condition that how could you not? And then it's got some other recommendations on the back. I haven't read this one. I have read the Port Chicago 50. That one was really good. I haven't read that one or that one. So, yeah. I got that copy. I also grabbed this book. Um, it's a prequel book about Riverdale and, like, the origins of Archie Comics. Um, I really, really like Archie comics. It's one of the comics that I enjoy kind of like leisurely collecting. I don't, I'm not obsessed with it because I find it too overwhelming. Like Archie comics are really prolific. So like I'm not out here with a spreadsheet of what I have. I just pick them up when I see them and add them to my shelf. Um, and so that was a really neat find that I was not expecting. So I picked it up as well. All right, I've got this one. Um, this one's called In the Shadow of the Sun. It is also a YA book, I believe. Um, basically, it's about this girl who tours North Korea and then her father is actually arrested. And so it talks about their journey. 
Um, this one was, let me see if I can get this off of the front. Okay. This one was also, it stuck out to me. It's about like a mother and a father who are retired and like looking back on their life and trying to kind of carve out their identities apart from their roles as parents. And so, um, it just looked really interesting to me. So I want to read that. All right. And I got a fanny flag because if you enjoy, uh, tomatoes from the Whistle Stop Cafe, also known as fried green tomatoes from the movie, I just, anytime I see a fanny flag, I pause because I'm like, that is a masterful writer. Um, I also got Richard Wright's Native Son. That was on the shelf. So I'm going to move this stack over. Um, and I haven't ever seen any, like his, I don't know. I can't, I saw it and I was like, I got to have it. So now I got this book. Um, I'm trying to take the sticker off the front because like it's a, I guess somebody bought it from Walmart or something. That was not the price I paid for it. So, but I don't like stickers on the books like that. That drives me insane. Let me know if you do also are not a sticker on your book person. Um, I'm also like not a huge movie poster book cover version person. So like, I like the books that the original covers, you know, how they come out with, like, movie adaptation covers when the movie comes out. I just, I don't like it. So. But, I grabbed this book because I have loved um, the Stephanie Plum series since before it was probably appropriate for me to love the Stephanie Plum series. And this is, like, one of the latest ones. Um, and I don't have... I'm waiting for the series to be done because it's getting to a, it's getting to a point where there's 30 books in the series and I just don't have the patience to keep up with the storyline. So I'm collecting them whenever I see them. I'm not putting pressure on myself to like go out and buy all of the ones that I don't have. I have up to like 25 I think so I'm not far behind but I just saw this and I was like well obviously I'm gonna pick that up. Let's see. Alright, and then I also picked up The Sweet Potato Queen's Book of Love, A Fallen Southern Belle's lo Look at Love, Life, Men, Marriage, and Being Prepared. Like, if you've ever seen anything more Southern in your life, come on. What in the world? But it's, like, about this woman who, um... It looks like there are a group of women out of Jackson, Mississippi. So, I don't know. I just thought it sounded funny. Um, and then, mind you, this sale was also dependent on how many books you purchased. So, that's why, like, some of these... I'm not going to rush to read that. <laughs> um, these two were free. I did pick them up because... I read, I read Junie B. Jones as a kid. I adored her. I still do. But this cover design is no longer the design for the book series anymore. So anytime I see the old, old um, cover design that I um, knew as a kid, I pick up a copy. And then I also got Trumpet of the Swan by E.B. White. So those two were free. And then I got... Curtain by Agatha Christie. I honestly don't even know. I haven't checked my collection yet to see if this is a duplicate. So this very well may go back to a donation pile somewhere else. Um, I got letters from Rivka because I read this as like I think a fifth grader. Essentially this um, Jewish young woman and her family immigrate to America and she has to stay behind at the um, immigration center because she has lice, I believe. 
and it just details their journey over to America and her detainment when she arrives and it just it, I still remember reading it in fifth grade so having my own copy was like chef's kiss I also got Far From the Matting Crowd by Thomas Hardy. Um, I've read the other book that he's well known for. It's called Tess of the... I, that one? Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm trying to get it to focus and not blind you at the same time. And I'm not very successful. Um, I've read that book. But I could not tell you very much about it. Because it... I read it, but it was hard to keep my attention, so. Um, and come on. Come on. What? <laughs> I had to get it, y'all. I had to get it. I could not. Come on. <laughs> okay. And then, possibly my most favorite score of this entire book haul is this fantastic cover. Like, look at this cover of Frankenstein. You cannot tell me that's not amazing. I saw it and I was like, absolutely, get in my freaking bag. Um, this is not a sticker. This is like an old school Walmart logo, two for one, which, can we bring those days back? Let me get a two for one deal at Walmart for a book. Like, amazing. Um, but I just, how could you not? Come on. That's how I look in the morning when I wake up. What do you mean? <laughs> it was just so funny and it is epic and... I am so delighted to have scored this copy. So, I got all of these books. Now, how much do you think I paid for them? Are you ready? Da -da. I paid $11 for all of these books plus those three containers at my Habitat for Humanity sale. So, go check out your Habitat for Humanity restore if you have one in your town. Um, and check out their book collection if they have one. Because... You might be surprised like I was. All right. Let me put these down. So, in the light of celebrating my recent book purchase, I thought I would share kind of an update of where we're at in my reading journal. Um... I essentially just kept things the way they are and um, moved a tab for 2024's books and then everything else is the same. I haven't like changed anything, moved to a different book. I did, so I did keep these pages pretty much empty when I first started the journal and now that a new year has started, I did come back in and add in a spread for book of the month as well as a no buy for books. I've already broken it and it's the fifth day of the year. So it's cool, it's cool. I'm also gonna track books that I, oh, like books read that I actually own <laughs> because that needs to happen a lot more this year than it has in the past. So um, that is kind of where I'm at. And now I'm gonna probably like just chill and speed this up um, and journal about my latest read. So, I'll come back when I'm done and kind of give you a full um, description of the book and close us out. So, let's get started.
right, so that is my first entry of 2024, and it is by, about the Book Eaters by Sunya Dean. And essentially, the book was really interesting because um, the author found the idea to create the book after reading a Reddit thread about how vampirism is a trope that's played out and you can't do anything new with it. And she decided to prove said Reddit writer incorrect um, and came up with the concept that these people eat books for it to survive. And essentially it follows a female book eater um, and that females are becoming more rare over time. Like they're not being born as often. So she's considered to be a princess and she gives birth to a daughter um, and all female book eaters are fed fairy tales as like their diet and female book eaters in particular are kept in the dark about a lot of the book eater societies and about how things really operate until they become of age to be married um, because all book eater females must get married and must have kids to keep their species going and I think this book would really benefit from like an origin story because they reference the creator as the beginning of their species but that's like it's really vague um and it doesn't go into deep detail and so that would be cool to like know the beginnings but for this purpose or for like this story in particular um so Devin eats all these fairy tales as a child and then when she grows up, she realizes her life isn't going to be like that because she's required to marry a man she doesn't love. And then she's required to give birth to his child to continue his lineage. And when she gives birth to a daughter, like that's a big deal, but she doesn't get to stay with her daughter. She actually gets removed from her daughter um, and she's sent to her next marriage to have another child. And so the second child she has is a male. And the male is born with like an elongated tongue because what's happened is there's been a mutation in the book eater genes where some book eaters give birth to what they call mind eaters. And mind eaters are exactly what that sounds like in that mind eaters eat human minds to survive. So when a book eater gives birth to a mind eater, they, you know, it's considered a terrible tragedy and like what a waste and the child once it's weaned from um the mother's breast ends up being taken by this faction of the book eaters called the knights where they raise the mind eater children to do their bidding and they control them through a drug called redemption and that's how the mind eaters are kept at bay from you know, revealing the book eaters and mind eaters existences to humans, as well as from killing people. Um, and so Devin gives birth to a mind eater. And the story is about her role as a mother in this um, society of a really patriarchal, um, really regimented, just kind of really backwards and outdated um expectations and they're very oppressive to the women and Devin is having none of it she's like she kills her husband she takes her kid she's like I'm getting out of dodge and you can't stop me um and her brother ends up becoming a knight so he ends up pursuing her and she fights with her brother it's like such a kick butt um character and it was so good. So yeah, that is The Book Eaters. And if you made it this far, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope you'll consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. And I hope you'll consider giving this video a thumbs up to help my channel grow. And last but not least, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.